Are female pastors biblical? What does the Bible say about this topic? Now, I did write a long Bible study on this. You can find it on my blog website right there. But let's dive right in. What does Paul say? Paul spoke about this in both 1 Timothy 3 and Titus chapter 1 and 2. Now, this is a very interesting portion of scripture. It's very gender specific. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desires a good work. And then Paul goes on to describe all the different qualifications for a church elder or pastor, but always referring to the male. He must be the husband of one wife. He must rule his own house well, and his children must be obedient. He must not be a novice. Why? Because being an elder is a very high calling. As elders, we are held to a much higher standard of accountability because we're teachers, we're administrators. Since we are the ones, basically the leaders of the church, people look to us for examples. And a new Christian should not be an elder because if he gets prideful, you know, that's a bad thing. He must also have a good reputation for those who aren't even in the church. Now, what's interesting about this is a lot of people automatically cry, that was cultural, that doesn't apply to now. However, using that hermeneutic is very problematic. Saying that Paul's counsel on church leadership is cultural is the same hermeneutic that is the reason that people uh, celebrate Sunday as the Sabbath. There's no biblical basis for Sunday. They cry that the Sabbath was cultural just for the Jews. And so many people keep Sunday as a result because they see the Sabbath as cultural. Much the same they see this as cultural. But interestingly enough, you never see female pastors and elders in churches who are striving to be biblical. You only ever see them in progressive churches, in the more liberal churches. And the fact that there's nothing in this context that shows that it even could be remotely cultural. In 1 Corinthians 11, we see the issue of head coverings. Here Paul says it's our custom for women to wear head coverings in church. So this gives us the intimation that head coverings for them was a cultural issue. But nothing in 1 Timothy 3 shows anything cultural. Now Paul also talked about this in Titus chapter 1. He wrote to Titus and he says, This is why I had you ordain elders in all the different churches there. What's his very first qualification? The husband of one wife. Now some people are going to cry that this is sexist. And if that's how you feel, take it up with the Word of God. And he goes on to list many of the same qualifications, all of them referring to male. Now what's interesting is he continues this line of thought in, into Titus chapter 2. And he starts discussing gender roles within the family and within the church. This idea of modern society that there are multitudinous amounts of genders, no there's not, there's only two. There is male, there is female, according to the Word of God. As Christians, that is the standard we go by, not culture. Now notice why Paul says these gender roles, these church leadership councils, need to be followed in verse 5. That the word of God be not blasphemed. So when we don't follow the gender roles that God has created for men and women, when we don't follow the church leadership council that he has given us in 1 Timothy 3 and Titus chapter 1 and 2, then we give occasion for the wicked to blaspheme the word of God. And the same counsel carries over into the family. Ephesians chapter 5, Paul talks about the family order. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as to the Lord. That's the key phrase, as to the Lord. Why is that important? Why do I emphasize that part? Because when we as husbands ask our wives or families to do ungodly things, they don't have to submit to those ungodly demands. As husbands, we are not God. For everybody's first duty, it's to God, not to their spouse, not to their children, not to anybody else, to God. And so when a husband is a godly man, then yes, wives submit to what he asks you to do as long as it's biblically permissible. Paul says the husband is the head of the wife. And notice he says head, not boss, not dictator, not tyrant. In today's society and throughout most of our history, uh, there have been many tyrannical husbands. But Paul says to husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church. And how did Jesus love the church? He gave his life for his church. He loved his church so much that he put his self aside. That doesn't mean neglect your health, men. Take care of yourselves, take care of your mental health, your spiritual health, your emotional health. But it does mean don't be arrogant. Don't put your needs above everybody else's. The way that Jesus led his disciples, the apostles, the way that he preached was to teach and let them make their own decisions. 
As husbands, it's not our job to be tyrants. It's our job to be godly leaders. Now, when we take this counsel and then apply it to the church, if at home the husband is the head of his wife, what then if that wife then goes to church and is the pastor there? This doesn't change at church. A wife cannot submit to her husband and then they go to church and the husband turn around to submit to his wife's church authority. That just doesn't work. Not to mention this whole female pastor thing, female elder thing, is a perversion of the gospel. How? Because marriage is an illustration of the gospel. As husbands, it is our job to lead our families to Jesus, to the cross, to the gospel. Jesus came down, lived as one of us, and led his church to the gospel. The church is his bride. And the pastors, the elders, are a symbolic representation of Jesus. And so what having a female pastor or a female elder does is flips that upside down, which is not biblical. If you want to go to my blog, I haven't posted there in a long time, but my article here, my study is still posted. Address down here at the bottom. There's a lot more in that study than we can get into in, in a TikTok video. And I know this video is going to make a lot of people upset, but take it up with the Word of God.